Hi, it's me again, Leah, from Teen Defenders. In my last video, I was talking about how there are choices we have to make in life. Some choices are like choosing where you want to buy your clothes. Those types of choices are basically personal preferences. But then there are some choices our society has problems with. Choices like deciding to kill your sister because she's bothering you. We have wisely attached consequences to choices like those, where there is a right or wrong answer. People are often confused about what category of choice abortion falls into. Many people believe that it's the mother's choice what she wants to do with her unborn baby. But yet those same supporters of the mother's choice would never say she can do whatever she wants with her newborn baby. I would have to agree that if the unborn aren't human, then abortion really is just another personal preference. It should be the mother's choice what she wants to do with her unborn baby, just like it's her choice what she wants to do with her tonsils or her kidney. But if the unborn are human, then they have value and rights. And it's important to remember that my rights of choosing what I want end where your rights begin. So that leads me to the question at hand. Are the unborn human? I'm here at one of the largest reference libraries in my city. I found this embryology textbook, and in here it states that human life begins at conception. What's interesting is that all of these embryology textbooks state the same thing. That shouldn't be surprising. At conception, a new life with its own unique DNA begins. An unborn baby is a part of the mother's body, like her tonsils or her kidney. All of the body parts of the mother share the same DNA, the mother's DNA. But an unborn baby has an entirely different DNA. He or she is separate from the mother. Really, the question, are the unborn human, isn't much of a question at all. It should be clear that when two living beings from the same species mate, the product will be the same species as the parents. But there are still people who will continue to argue that the unborn aren't human. To argue for the pro-abortion standpoint, there are arguments like, how can something so small be a human? I mean, it looks like a clump of cells to me. Or, since most abortions take place within the first trimester, the baby is still totally dependent on the mother. The mother's health affects the unborn baby's health. How can that unborn baby be human on its own, separate from the mother? There are also arguments like, the unborn baby can't think, or feel pain, or know that it exists. Or, the unborn baby isn't born yet, it isn't in the world, it doesn't even breathe air. Each of these arguments can be categorized into one of four characteristics which distinguish the unborn from everybody else. These four characteristics are size, level of development, environment, and degree of dependency. Stephen Schwartz combined them into the acronym SLED. Let's take a look at the first characteristic. Number one. Size. The most common argument in this category is, how can something so small be a human? I mean, it looks like a clump of cells to me. Is our society saying that the unborn aren't human simply because they aren't as big as us? Doesn't that sound like discrimination? I think that's called sizeism. Yes, an unborn baby isn't as big as a toddler, but a toddler isn't as big as a grown adult. Does that mean that the toddler isn't human either, or somehow less human than the adult? Surely our society doesn't want to start discriminating based on size in our everyday life. Why should we discriminate against the unborn based on their size? After all, a person's a person no matter how small. And for those who say that a fetus looks like a clump of cells, this is a fetus at 11 weeks. Number two, level of development. Other people argue that since the unborn aren't fully developed yet, the unborn aren't human. The most common argument is, the unborn can't think, or feel pain, or even know that they exist. Well, firstly, it's impossible to determine precisely when the unborn can start doing these things. But it's arbitrary to assume that humanity is based on any of these factors. For those who think this, may I ask how you came up with that conclusion in a non-arbitrary way? Take the ability to feel pain as an example. What about those who are born and have SEPA disease? They'll never be able to feel pain. Can we kill them too? No, of course not. 
because their humanity isn't based on whether or not they feel pain. Also, we as humans continue to develop until around the age of 16. No one is fully developed until then. Am I not human simply because I'm not fully developed? I can state without a shadow of a doubt that I am human and I have value and rights. Unfortunately, the unborn can't speak for themselves. Number three, environment. The most common argument in this category is, the unborn baby isn't in the world yet, it's in the mother's body, and it doesn't even breathe air. This argument seems to be saying that the unborn baby isn't human because it's in a different environment. But since when does where you are determine who you are? Throughout this video, I've been moving from place to place. Yes, I've been changing what environment I'm in, but I haven't changed who I am as a person. So how does the 8-inch trip down the birth canal change that blob of tissue into a valued human being with rights? The truth is, it doesn't. That fetus was human before then and had been human since conception. Another common argument is, the unborn baby is in the mother's body, which is her property, so the mother should be able to do whatever she wants with that unborn baby. But let's say that the mother has a one-day-old baby. That baby needs shelter, so she brings that baby into her home. Now, if we look at a fetus one day before it's born, it isn't fully developed, depends on the mother, and is in her body, her property. Now, if we look at that one-day-old baby, it isn't fully developed, depends on the mother, and is in her house, her property. What makes it okay to kill the one and not the other? Number four, degree of dependency. Some people say that since the unborn are still dependent on the mothers and can't survive on their own yet, the unborn aren't human. Their argument is, since most abortions take place within the first trimester, the baby is still totally dependent on the mother. The mother's health affects the unborn baby's health. How is that unborn baby human on its own, separate from the mother? Really, this argument is based on flawed reasoning, because even a one-week-old baby who's made it out of the womb is still totally dependent on another human. Or what about those who are on life support or have pacemakers? They depend on medical instruments. Are they not human? I still depend on my parents to provide me with food, clothing, and shelter. Do I not have value and rights? My parents also depend on others to provide them with a job to earn money and food to buy. Does that affect their humanity in some way? Really, if we take this argument to its logical conclusion, we should be able to kill those who are on welfare because they depend on the government. Hopefully you can see that this argument is illogical. We are all dependent on someone to a degree, and no one goes around saying that those who are more dependent aren't human, or are somehow less human than others. But somehow, our society is able to accept this argument when it comes to the unborn. So now we've talked about the four categories of arguments that people use to dehumanize the unborn. But if you think about it, our size, level of development, environment, and degree of dependency continue to change, not only from conception to birth, but from birth to adulthood. So if we're going to use these arguments to allow the killing of the unborn, we should be able to kill any child. Obviously, that's ridiculous. It should be clear that the unborn are human. Really, the onus of proof lies on those who claim that the unborn are not human, and I guarantee they will not be able to prove their claim. Since we can say that the unborn are human, all of the arguments for abortion that say that it's the mother's choice fall away. So even if a fetus is conceived through rape, or is handicapped or deformed, we wouldn't use these arguments to allow a mother to kill her one-week-old baby, so we can't use these arguments to allow her to kill her unborn child. But in reality, scientists, parliamentarians, and lawmakers don't argue that the unborn aren't human. Instead, they acknowledge the humanity of the unborn, but are now denying them their personhood, and thereby denying them their rights. So what you have to decide is, is it possible to be human and not a person? And we'll look at that in the next video.